is the story of one group of teenagers at a crossroad in their lives. It's about hope and second chances. It's the story of outward bounds, families in need of services, or FINS programs. Spot, you guys. Throughout each year, groups of boys and girls are profoundly impacted by courses designed to turn kids around before they reach the juvenile justice system. Without the financial support of corporations and individuals, FINS program wouldn't exist in some places. The next nine minutes is a story of one FINS expedition and how this program can completely change the course of a young person's life. It's a chance to see what a difference you can make for kids, families, and your community. I want to welcome everybody over here and thank you guys for, one, taking that first initial step to beginning to change your life. I think it's pretty impressive that you're making this step. Um, is it an easy step? No. Um, is this going to be an easy course? No. Is it going to be easy on the students? Nope. Is it going to be easy on the parents? Absolutely not. This is Steve and my grandson, which I inherited when my daughter died. And very smart boy. I'm just hoping the best for him while I'm here. I just hope this will be a good beginning. I do. Left something out. Skateboard. You love not skateboard. He's a dirt bike junkie. <laughs> Fins is families in need of services. We're a diversion program. Our goal is to target 13 to 17 year old kids who have a problem with truancy, ungovernable behavior, or runaway behavior, and keep them out of the juvenile justice system. He's just really rebellious when it comes to following rules and conformity. Not that I want him to be a soldier, but he's just a wild child, you know, and he just. Running away from home, not going to school, first semester missed like 21 days. And this is very tough. He has a good head on his shoulder. He just makes the wrong decisions. That's his big thing, the wrong decisions. The children we're working with, they're already demonstrating ungovernable, runaway, or truancy behavior. We're also targeting high crime zip codes. We're also targeting failing schools. Those are all risk factors. So for some of our children, they have five risk factors. If that child isn't diverted, the state probably spend at a minimum of ten to fifteen thousand dollars to address that child's needs if he breaks the law and is incarcerated, adjudicated. If we can divert him, they can do it for a fraction of the cost. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody else. Generally, the students come into the course, have some difficulty. They're taken out of their typical environment and begin to work through these processes of figuring out their issues and working on their issues. For example, anger management. After maybe a couple of days on the river, they begin to display some anger management problems. That's when we can target their dealing with the anger management. How you acted probably wasn't appropriate. And so this is when we want to take that time out. Where did Outward Bound come from? During the Second World War, 1940, Britain was being kept alive by its convoys. They were having horrible death rates among the survivors of torpedo ins that would make it to the lifeboats. And out of that came a program called Outward Bound to basically take 14 to 17 year old boys and give them a course in survival. Not so much survival in how do you live in a lifeboat, but a course in how do you believe in yourself and how do a group of people come and pull together for a common cause and survive it. It worked beautifully. Good morning. We're on the St. John River and paddling against the current uh, which makes it pretty tough and we're averaging about seven miles a day if you lay the mileage all out here it is day nine they haven't taken a shower haven't watched tv listened to a radio really don't know what's going on in nine days when you're 15 years old is is a lifetime they've got a 48 hour solo coming up they're going off to be by themselves for a 48 hour period and they're not going to be with their group at all so this is a this is this, this part of course is a big time okay welcome to your new home for 48 hours all right let me show you your boundaries first all right 
The students experience incredible amounts of emotions during the first couple of weeks. They are challenged in ways that they've never been challenged before. Um, so it gives them a time to think about what's happened to them and to learn lessons and to honestly reflect on what they've done and what they can bring back home with them. I'm thinking that like, I need to get it together. Uh, how those places is giving me time to think about what I've done and I shouldn't be doing it anymore. I hope I'll stop like hanging around the wrong kids and getting into fights and stuff like that, getting bad grades. Stop fooling around in school. Final Expedition is a chance for the students to take back what they've learned on the river during training in Maine Expedition and become their own group. They become the instructors and the instructors become safety management officers. They have an opportunity to express what they've learned and the freedoms to do that. I've learned a bunch of like survival skills, how to make fire out in the woods, how to be able to eat powdered cereal every day and deal with it. And that if you work hard, you will get something good at the end. These kids have had so many failures and they can succeed here. And it once once they get that taste of success, they're gonna want more of it. The five miles marathon, an extraordinary success for these group of gentlemen, incredible times. Come on, guys. The latest kid was 60 minutes, which is typically the, the time that the first student will often arrive. I like the idea of them living out in the woods. So yes, it gives them an idea that home sweet home is home sweet home. I hope you guys can really remember just what it takes, what it took for you to get here, what it takes to work as a team, because now you're going back into your family, that family team. And that's going to take a lot of work, too. The stuff that you all learned out here is the stuff you need to use back at home to make success more of a common word for you. And you can leave kind of the negative behaviors that you may have had coming into this program, you can leave those here and go back home starting on a, a clean slate, working to be successful. Congratulations because you worked real hard to get here. With your progress? No, with my progress. Okay. Well, not yet. Right now, the students are moving into the follow-up process, and it's a time for the instructors to come in and be the liaison between the student and the family to help them figure out how these kids and these families are going to make it through these years of that student's life. Um, number two. Be what is, more, hang on, stick to number one for a second. What does that mean? Be more selective with friends and activities? Like I've been hanging out with like some bad people that have been getting me in trouble and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be like picking ones that I can just like hang out and have like mm -hmm. clean fun without causing. You take a 13 year old boy and you tell him he's going to paddle 100 miles, he doesn't believe you. But after he's done it, you can also say, you know that teacher you're having trouble with? Maybe it's not as impossible as you thought to sit down and negotiate something with him. We get feedback from the schools that I don't know what you did, but this isn't the same kid who left here 20 days ago. Kids come off of this changed people with an experience that they will never forget. 30 years down the line, they will still be talking about their outward bound course and what they learned and the experiences and the challenges and the difficulties they went through. What we're doing here is we're applying something that almost everyone universally around the world recognizes as a powerful experience for human beings, and we're applying it to a very risky young population. There are children, 
If you're gonna invest in anybody, why not invest in children? Why not invest in a program that's got a track record? You put those two together, and I think you would be hard pressed to find something that would be a more legitimate donation.